my name is uh, ranjit bauri i am from the department of uh, metallurgical and materials engineering at iit madras today uh, we are going to start this nptel course on uh, theory and practice of non destructive testing which is being offered under nptel online certification course or noc so uh, before we start the course let me first tell you what are the main learning objectives for this course as you may know uh, non destructive testing uh, plays an extremely important role in flaw detection quality control and structural health monitoring in engineering components and system across a wide range of industries there are a varieties of nit techniques which are in use these methods are as such uh, fairly simple to use however it is important to know the underlying principles of each of the techniques to be able to use them effectively so if you are a practicing engineer or a entity professional or looking to be one then knowing the basic principle apart from the method will surely give you an advantage because if you know the underlying principle behind a particular entity method then you will know exactly what is going on inside when the test is being done okay so that is why one of the main learning objectives of this particular course on ndt is to learn the fundamental basic principle uh, behind each of the ndt methods that we are going to cover so that you develop an understanding uh, over the science and the underlying principles which govern a particular entity method okay so that's the uh, first objective and the other objective of course is to uh, know about the method uh, learn about the method as to uh, how the method is done uh, what process is uh, followed what are the process parameters and so on so these are the two uh, primary learning objective one is to first learn the basic principle and then to learn about the method and the process details okay so this is how we will go about uh, this particular course okay and as you could see uh, these are the two books uh, which are listed over here that i recommend for you to to follow uh, most of the topics uh, that we are going to cover uh, in this course will be available in these two books the first one is on uh, on destructive testing uh, by louis kaj Uh, which is published by asm international and the second one is an uh, asm handbook uh, uh, volume number 17 uh, which is on non destructive evaluation and quality control so asm handbook uh, volume number 17 is totally dedicated to ndt so you can follow that uh, book also uh, for most of the topics that we are going to cover okay and the third one that you have over here uh, this is an online resource Uh, this website uh, nd-ed.org this also has a lot of information about the ndt methods so these are the three uh, references that i recommend you to follow for this particular course okay so that's about the learning objective at this point in time i should also tell you that if you have uh, any doubt uh, for any of the topics uh, that we are going to cover uh, in this particular course you can always come back to us uh, please feel free to ask whatever doubt you have no matter uh, whether it is a small doubt uh, or a big doubt you please feel free uh, to ask and uh, clear your doubts clarify your doubts so you can either use uh, the discussion forum that we have for every course or if you wish you can uh, write back to me also i'll be happy to answer all the questions so let's start so to begin with i want to just give you a small introduction about uh, non destructive testing uh, before we actually begin the course and the methods defects and flaws uh, as you know uh, can be present inside a component or an engineering system and if these defects and flaws if if they are not addressed they can hamper uh, the performance of a particular component or an engineering system it can the, the defects uh, can also reduce the life of the component and may even lead to failure if uh, they are not detected and addressed okay so uh, it is necessary it is important to detect these defects 
to be able to take uh, corrective measures so that the performance of the system is not hampered and you do not end up with a failure uh, in an engineering system. Okay? Uh, but the thing is, uh, once a component is made, okay, uh, you cannot uh, destroy it, you cannot break it again uh, to see if there is a defect inside it or not. Okay? So, that is where the NDT methods uh, come into picture, uh, wherein you can detect a defect, you can detect a flaw uh, without uh, destroying the component. Okay? So, there are two uh, primary objectives of uh, doing NDT as you could see, uh, which is uh, listed over here in the first slide. One, uh, as I told is to ensure that uh, when you release a component uh, to the market or to the end user, you need to ensure that the component is uh, free of defects and flaws. Otherwise, uh, the performance of the component uh, will be seriously affected. Okay? So, that is uh, before the component is used. Okay? So, that is uh, that's one aspect which is about quality control of a particular component or a particular product. Okay? Now, when this component is being used in a particular system, uh, there also there are possibilities that some kind of flaws or defect can develop during service. Okay? So, there again uh, you need to ensure that uh, these defects and flaws are detected so that uh, the performance uh, of the system uh, is not affected. But there again, uh, you cannot uh, destroy or cannot uh, disturb the system or the component to know that if there is a defect or not. So, there again for the maintenance part of it, when you are monitoring the health of a particular component or of a particular uh, system or structure, you have to do it uh, without destroying or without uh, disturbing the system. Okay? So, there again uh, NDT methods uh, come into picture wherein during in service condition uh, you would be able to check and detect if there is any flaw or any damage which is developed uh, in the system which may affect either the performance or life of the system. So, this is the uh, second objective that is uh, to do maintenance and do uh, health monitoring of a given system or component when it is in use. So, these are the two uh, primary objectives of doing NDT. Okay? So, having said that, uh, now if you come to the actual uh, NDT methods. Okay? So, as I said, we are going to cover uh, all the commonly used uh, NDT techniques and what we are going to do uh, in this course, uh, first uh, we will cover the basic principle uh, behind a particular NDT method. Uh, so, all the methods are listed over here as you could see. So, we will uh, pick one at a time and then first uh, cover the basic principle uh, behind that particular method and then learn about the method itself as to how it is done, uh, what process is followed and what are the process parameters and process details. Okay? So, uh, these are the methods uh, which will be covered in this particular course uh, during uh, next 8 weeks or so. Okay? So, now, uh, if you if you talk about uh, the methods and their classification, these NDT methods uh, can be broadly classified into two categories. Uh, one is uh, surface NDT, and the other is uh, bulk NDT. Okay, so this depends on uh, whether the defect or the flaw, uh, whether it is located on the surface or it is located inside the bulk or volume of the component or the material which is being tested. Okay? So, if you know beforehand that uh, most of your defects are going to be limited on the surface, then you need to select a surface NDT method. Similarly, if you know that uh, the defects are going to be inside the material below the surface, then you select a bulk or volume NDT methods. Okay? So, the different uh, methods which are listed over here, uh, some of them will fall under the first category of surface NDT 
and some of them will fall under the second category. For example, this first one, uh, I am not talking about this first, uh, this uh, visual optical, I will come back to that. So, these are the uh, different entity methods. So, this one uh, liquid penetrant inspection or LPI, magnetic particle testing and eddy current testing. Okay. So, these are the methods which will fall under the uh, first category that is uh, surface entity method. On the other hand, uh, techniques like uh, ultrasonic testing, uh, radiographic testing, acoustic emission testing, uh, this will all fall under the second category which is bulk or uh, volume entity. Okay. And there are some techniques uh, like for example, the ultrasonic testing which can do both. It can do surface entity as well as it can also be used for bulk or volume entity. Okay. So, these all are the techniques uh, that will be covered in this particular course and as I said there will be two aspects. One, the basic uh, fundamental principle behind each of this technique and the second aspect would be to cover the method and learn about the method in more details. Okay. Now, if you see on the top of the list, uh, there is something called uh, visual optical. Okay. Uh, this is coming in the list because uh, before you do any NDT, before you use any NDT technique to detect flaws, uh, what do you first do? You try and see visually okay, on the external surface of a component or of a part, if something is visible to the naked eye. Okay. Sometime you may also want to take help of uh, some kind of visual or optical aids, which will help you out to visualize of course, externally on the surface, if there is any damage or defect that you can easily detect and see. Okay. So, that is why this is coming in this list also, or although it is not uh, really uh, in strict sense uh, or entity method, but as I said that is the first thing uh, which uh, people will do uh, to see if any flaws are visible externally. So, we will start with that we will start with the visual optical method first and then we will go on to the other entity methods one by one as I said and then cover them in more detail. Okay. So, I will uh, project the first slide uh, right now to start with the visual optical method. Okay. So, as I said the first topic of uh, the series of lectures will be on this visual optical method. That means, as I said, you try and see externally on the surface of a component or of a part, if you could see something visually. Okay. So, you could simply take the part or take the component and then try and see it in a well illuminated area on you know different uh, portions, all the areas and then see first of all whether you can see something by naked eye. Okay. If you do not see anything uh, by naked eye, then you can take uh, the help of some visual aids. For example, you can use a magnifying glass uh, which will enhance the visibility of the surface of the component and then see using uh, a magnifying glass, you, you try and see if something is visible externally uh, on the surface of the component or not. If it is a smaller component which can be uh, put under a light microscope, then you can uh, take that component, uh, put it under a light microscope and then you can observe it uh, through the microscope with uh, some bit of magnification which will help you out again to visualize and see if uh, any damage or any defect is visible on the surface. Okay. So, this is what uh, you could see, you could uh, try and see with uh, naked eye okay. or you could use some visual aids which could be you know as I said a magnifying glass, a light microscope. 
and things like that. which will enhance the visibility of the surface of the component and help you out in visualizing any external defect or any external damage. Okay. Coming back to this, there could be cases uh, when you are doing uh, visual inspection, uh, there could be cases wherein uh, your physical access uh, to the area that you want to examine is limited or uh, the visibility is limited. Okay. So, if there are issues with uh, the physical access or visibility, for example, if you want to inspect uh, the inner diameter of a bolt hole, so then inside the bolt hole you cannot really see and you cannot really physically access it okay, as an examiner. So, in uh, such, scenario, uh, such uh, scenarios, uh, such cases wherein you have limited physical access or limited visibility, then uh, you have to use some other device, uh, for example, this one, which will again help you out in uh, visualizing the area that you are trying to examine. Okay? So, in cases like uh, this kind of bore hole or bolt hole, wherein you need to go inside and inspect the diameter. So, this particular device uh, which is known as bore scope is very useful. Okay? So, let us talk about this in little more detail as to uh, what it is and how it is used uh, to inspect uh, visually parts uh, where you do not have direct physical access or where the visibility is limited. Okay? So, this is uh, nothing but a tube. Uh, the diameter of which will depend on uh, the diameter of the part or the diameter of the area that you are trying to inspect. So, there is a range uh, for example, as you could see from this, there is a range uh, from 4 to 70 millimeter. So, depending on what is your part diameter, uh, you could uh, select a particular tube of a given size. Okay? So, this, uh, this is primarily a tube and it has two ends as you could see this one and the other one. So, this end which is also known as the distal end will go inside the area uh, which will be examined. So, this end should also have a light source for example, in this case as you could see uh, there is an incandescent lamp which will illuminate uh, the area which is being examined and then it will enhance the visibility. right? And in this end, you can see that uh, there is an objective lens also, which will form the image of the area that you are trying to examine. Okay? And then inside the tube, uh, you can see uh, there is a series of uh, achromatic relay lenses. So, these lenses will help you uh, focus the light uh, on the area uh, to image it. And then this image uh, will be sent back uh, to this eyepiece, which is at the other end. Okay? So, one end uh, which is going inside the part, this distal end will have the light source to illuminate the area and we will also have the objective lens to form the image. And then on the other hand, on the other side you have an eyepiece over here through which you uh, see this image of the area and then uh, inspect it, try and see if you could see some external damage, uh, some surface defect and things like that. Okay? And this eyepiece uh, can be interchangeable, uh, so that uh, you would be able to provide some magnification also to certain extent, uh, for example, uh, in the range of 3 to 50 x. So, through that uh, eyepiece you should be able to also magnify that will again enhance the visibility of the area and help you out in visualizing damage or defects on the external surface. Okay? So, in terms of uh, the flexibility or the rigidity uh, of this tube, uh, there are two categories in this. There are two categories of uh, bore scope. The first one is rigid. So, as the name suggests, in this case this tube is uh, solid, it is a solid tube and it's, it is fixed you cannot bend it or you cannot move it. Okay? So, it is a fixed solid tube and that is why this is called a rigid uh, system. 
But in the rigid category itself, you could have two sub categories. One is completely rigid, which is the first one, uh, which just now I described. And in the second one, in order to uh, broaden enough the field of view, you could also have uh, on the tube which goes inside the area being examined. On that tube, we can provide some uh, movement like some uh, rotational movement. So, you could have a shaft uh, which is basically uh, the tube that contains uh, the light guide bundles you know to form the image, but this tube can also rotate. Okay? So, there is a rotating shaft in this case to give you uh, a kind of orbital scan around the area uh, which is being examined. So, as you could see uh, from this end. So, this is the end which is going inside the area being examined and because of this rotation of the shaft, uh, this light guide bundle which is inside this shaft, because of this rotational motion, this will provide you an orbital scan and that will in turn uh, enhance the field of view. So, that is the advantage you have in this case over this fixed one wherein you do not have any movement at all. Okay? So, in this case we have a rotating shaft and that will improve or broad enough the field of view as you could see from here. Okay? So, the primary parts in this case are again there are two parts, uh, one is uh, this tube which uh, goes inside the area being examined and this primarily contains uh, a light guide, a light guide bundle to illuminate the area and also to form the image. So, uh, this will be connected to a light source and on the other end like you had in the previous case, uh, you have uh, an eyepiece connected and there is some mechanical attachment over here through which uh, you would be able to control this rotation or the orbital scan. Okay? So, there is a control unit small uh, control unit over here which will control the rotational motion of this rotating shaft and then at this end you have that eyepiece uh, through which you see the image which is formed at this end and then try and analyze uh, if you could see something uh, some visual defects or some visual damage on the external surface of the part. Okay, so, uh, this is about uh, the rigid uh, kind of uh, bore scope, but uh, there may be cases uh, wherein uh, you need to have more flexibility in the sense you may have to go around uh, inside the area which is being examined. So, in those cases uh, this kind of uh, rigid system will have some limitations you know some difficulty because you need to move around here and there around the examining area. So, to overcome this difficulty, there is another system which is a flexible bore scope as you could see. This uh, tube that you have in this case, uh, this is a flexible one. Okay? So, you can bend it easily, so that you can move around and go around and uh, you will be able to cover uh, different areas and go in different angles and so on. Okay? So, this will uh, this flexibility of the tube will help you out in moving around and going around and uh, cover a broader area. Okay? So, that is the purpose here to give you more flexibility uh, when you are examining a particular area where you do not have physical access. Okay? So, let us see what are the uh, different parts of this. Here again what you need to do like the basic function is same you need to form an image in this end okay, which goes inside the area which is being examined and this image is being transferred to the other end where you have this eyepiece lens through which you uh, see the area, the image of the area and then analyze try and see if you could see some damage or defect. Okay? So, the basic function is same, but the different parts uh, could be uh, different. So, in this case as you could see uh, there are uh, basically two uh, light guide bundles one is uh, to form the image and to carry the light uh, to the area being examined to illuminate it and also uh, to form the image. And uh, there is uh, one more uh, uh, light guide 
bundle which is known as the image guide. So, this both of these are made of uh, optical fibers, thin optical fibers which are of the size of around 30 micrometer in diameter. Okay. So, with the help of this image guide bundle and uh, light guide bundle uh, which is made of optic fibers, you would be able to form the image first. Uh, so, this will be connected to a light source as I said to carry the light all the way to this end to illuminate the area and then form the image. And then once the image is formed at this end and here again you could see you have objective lens to form the image and once the image is formed this will be transferred uh, through this image guide bundle uh, to the eyepiece and then you would be able to uh, see it and analyze it. This will uh, give you one more possibility of uh, connecting a CCD image sen sensor at this end, this end instead of uh, an objective lens so that you would be able to capture digital images. So, if you have a digital camera and if you connect this uh, CCD sensor at this end, on the other end then you can have uh, a digital camera and capture digital images. So, this is the other advantage of uh, this particular device which is flexible. Apart from the flexibility, it also provides you an opportunity to uh, store the images so that uh, if you want you can analyze them later on also. Okay. So, the advantages here are more flexibility, border coverage and if you want you can store and save the images and you can analyze them as and when you want. Then finally, let us see uh, what are the different application areas of this kind of devices or bore scopes. So, as I, I said in the beginning, uh, this is particularly useful uh, in areas where you have limited physical access or you have limited visibility such as inner diameter of bolt holes or similar hollow parts. So, in this kind of areas in uh, you know this kind of cases wherein you need to go inside a hole or inside a bore, you can use this uh, bore scope to help you out in uh, analyzing the inner surface. Okay. If you have uh, parts which are very small, for example, uh, junctions in electronic components, so these are very small junctions. So, there again uh, you have uh, problem with the visibility. Okay. So, in this case the visibility is limited. So, here again this bore scope can be used, you can illuminate the area first and then you can capture an image, uh, magnify a bit. So, it will enhance the visibility and you would be able to easily see the junctions and smaller parts like that and you would be able to see if there are any external damage or not. And finally, uh, it can also be used for visual inspection of difficult to reach areas in uh, bigger systems or uh, bigger structures uh, for example, in aircraft in uh, parts uh, such as some parts of the engine. Uh, if you go to the inner areas of the engine where the examiner does not really have physical access, direct physical access. So, in those areas again uh, these uh, bore scopes are quite useful wherein you can take that uh, and you know go put that inside uh, a hole or things like that where you do not have physical access and then capture the image or analyze it. Okay. Having said that all these are fine, you can do it uh, using some kind of uh, visual or optical aid or using a bore scope, but uh, this is uh, limited to a certain extent of inspection in the sense you would be only able to see the surface and you would be able to see if there is any external damage or not. Okay right at the top of the surface. So, this kind of inspection, this visual op optical inspection is only limited to examining the external damage on the surface. Okay. If it is visible by naked eye or with the help of uh, some kind of visual aids or some kind of optical devices like a bore scope or things like that. Okay. So, you cannot go beyond that. That means, if you have something underneath. That means, if you have something below the surface or in the bulk of the component, in the bulk of the material which is not uh, visible to the naked eye, then uh, this particular technique 
uh, cannot be used. As I told you in the beginning, that is why probably uh, you know we are not listing this in a strict sense as an NDT method because if something is not feasible externally on the surface, this particular method cannot be used. This is only for examining the external damages and things like that which may be either visible to naked eye or visible to uh, human eye with the aid of some kind of uh, optical or visual devices. Okay? So, if you want to examine uh, which is lying beneath, you need to come back to this NET method. So, that is where lies the utility of the NDT methods the where you know you can apply a particular NDT method to visualize and get uh, visible indications of defects and flaws which are not visible to naked eye. Okay? So, that is the purpose of this particular course uh, to see how exactly a particular NDT method is applied to make uh, visible indications or defects, vis visible indications of defects and flaws which are either on the surface, subsurface or into the bulk of the material. Okay. So, this class was for uh, the visual optical uh, method. So, I will stop here today. From next class onwards, uh, what we are going to do? We are going to uh, pick up this NDT techniques one at a time. And then as I said in the beginning, first we will cover the basic principle behind the technique and then we will see, we will learn about the method as to how the method is done, what is the process and the process details. Okay? So, that we are going to start from next class onwards. So, today I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.